Welcome. You have reached review time with Imperial. Today's review will be Judas and the Black Messiah, starring Daniel Kulia, Lakeith Stanford, and Dominique Fishback. And uh, Daniel Kulia is playing as Fred Hampton. Lakeith Stanfield is playing as William O'Neill. Dominique Fishback is playing as Deborah Johnson. And uh, you have uh, Roy um, Jesse Plainman's playing as Roy Mitchell, the FBI agent. Um, it's other actors and actresses in here. And um, you got uh, Jermaine Flower, Fowler. He plays as Mark Clark. He's going to be playing in an upcoming movie in um, Coming to America 2. Uh, you got uh, Little Rel Howard. He plays in here as um, Wayne. You got Martin Sheen, he's playing as J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, that's pretty much um, the standouts in the uh, movie. And here we go again, people. You know, here we go, another one. Another one starting the year off. This is based on a true story. And I really just was seeing the trailers. I really wasn't paying attention to... Uh, the characters in it, I just seen it was something to do with Black Panthers. And basically, uh, Fred Hampton was a Black Panther activist out of Chicago that was getting steam and getting the people behind him. And uh, J. Edgar Hoover was speaking to all the FBI agents and everything and was wanting them to come up to get him stop. He was the next person in line that they wanted to stop his movement. And so basically there will be rewards for people that can get it stopped. So the FBI agent Roy Mitchell, he jumped into mode to he wanna be one of the ones that was um, responsible for the takedown of Fran Hampton and his organization, the Black Panther Party in Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. In comes William O'Neill, who was a street hustler, posing as FBI agents, robbing people for their cars, doing stupid, petty stuff. And, of course, one day he went and robbed somebody for their car. He got pulled over by the cops, and in comes him meeting with the FBI agent, Roy Mitchell. And Roy basically tells him, you go get... Uh, about 18 months for the stolen car. You're going to get about five years for a person that is an FBI agent. So um, he had his little fake badge that he had with his picture on it. And he pretty much was like, I want you to infiltrate the Black Panther Party. I want you to come back and give me detail. Give me information on their setup, what they got going on. And uh, he does. Fred Hampton is beloved by the people. One of his, uh, Deborah Johnson, she was like, um, you could see right away she was fond of him. And so, you know, he ended up, one thing leads to another, he links with her. And you don't know at the time that uh, Fred Hampton is only 21 years old, so he's pretty young. And he got this big movement going on and people was flocking to him and it was just showing how he wasn't just reaching out to black people he was reaching out to what you quote unquote would call like um uh rednecks and he was reaching out to latinos and they were all forming with him for his cause and basically to try to take down the system and um they found a way to get him locked up, and he was locked up. And while he was locked up, his you know his movement dimmed, and um, his peoples was having shootout with the um, cops and stuff like that, and they got locked up. And then from there, you had uh, he got out of jail eventually. All this time, William O'Neill is giving out details, and they find out that they had another informant in another area that was giving him detail. He was coming to town to town and basically uh, he was playing like 
he was part of the Black Panthers and he found out there was a snitch and he killed him. So it made him look like a G, but really he was an informant and the FBI knew who he was and at any given time they could put a murder on him and get him out the way. And so um, William O'Neill is pretty much, he's panicking like, yo, they can figure me out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He want to get out. But he, meanwhile, he's getting close to Fred Hampton or whatever. So Fred Hampton eventually gets out of jail. When he get out of jail, he find out that Deborah's pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And she's kind of like looking at him. He understands his cause and what he stand for. And he's for the people. But she trying to tell him, like, man, we got a kid. Like, we need to think different. Like, we need to think for self. But he feels as though he owe everything to this. So he's trying to do all these programs for the people feed the people, get them a hospital and stuff like that. Big dreams with no systematic system in place or no power, real true power behind to make those changes. These people ain't going to let you overtake the, the government, you know. And we've seen what just happened in the Capitol. They're not, it's bigger than whatever, you know what I'm saying. So um, that approach, you know, back then at that time it seemed bigger than life because nobody was seeing stuff like that. And you had people willing to be part of the cause, but you didn't have no, you know, it was a no-win situation. They were trying, though. And that's like a self-reflection. That's kind of, these kind of movies, I, I really don't um, like to watch them because I already know the outcome. And when I seen the trailer, you already knew what the outcome was going to be. And, uh, you probably just didn't know it was a true story and know the story behind it if you didn't already know. But nevertheless, uh, uh, William O'Neill, played by Lakeith Stanfield, is basically, he went out, they basically said, you gotta hang in there until we are done with you. And the FBI agent pretty much said, I'll set you up nice. And so, Little Rel's character, which is Wayne, showed up, like he's, he's an agent too. And basically sip, slipped him some cyanide poison and basically said, give this to Fred Hampton and it won't look like nothing. And basically asked him, do we want to drink? And he had drink it. And then when he go to sleep that night, he had died. And so that night, what they did was they had the um, police come and raid the place. And instantly when the police come in, they come in shooting and when... His girlfriend, Deborah, tried to wake him up. He didn't wake up. He was already dead. He died in his sleep. And, but it made it look like they raided the place. And then a cop went in the room where he was and sh stood over top of him and shot him. But he was already dead. And pretty much the girlfriend knew he was already dead at that time. Meanwhile, um, William O'Neill was meeting with the FBI agent. He slipped them an envelope with some money and keys to a gas station out somewhere else and pretty much saying, um, you, you'll you own a gas station now and you'll be able to make your own money and um, legit money. And he was like, well, pretty much I'm out the Panther Party now. And he was like, are you? So basically, like, I'm going to set you up somewhere else and you're going to infiltrate another area. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, that's how pretty much the movie ended. Um, Fred Hampton died at 21. His girlfriend, um, she um, had she had a baby. And 25 days later after his death. And to this day, she's still part of a uh, Panther organization. And Fred Hampton's son, Jr., is the head, the chairman of it. And it shows a picture of him and the mom. And then in the background, it shows a picture of uh, Fred Hampton uh, from back in the day. Then it shows a documentary that came out in 1990 of William O'Neill telling everything that he did and you know um, it, and it dropped on Martin Luther King's birthday in 1990 so they showed that as well. And that's pretty much the end of the movie man and um, that's all I'm going to say about it. These type of movies I'm not even going to rate. Um, I don't like watching these type of movies. I really stay away from them or whatever because it's um it puts a bad like taste in your mouth and thought process and stuff like that and it's always these movies get greenlit for a reason like i don't 
knock the actors and actresses. They got to get their money, and they did uh, a good job with their acting. Um, Daniel, um, uh, Coolia, you know, he's his roles. He's knocking them out the park, and so uh, they're doing. They got to make their money, so they Stanfield did his role. But it's just these movies get greenlit for a reason. Just a constant reminder where you at and what you don't have. So take that for what it, what it's worth. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment if you've seen it. Till next time.